peace and understanding class. Good morning on this beautiful and productive day. This is a follow-up video. Since we did not meet today, we have an abundance of assignments that are due on Canvas, and I want you to be aware and cognizant of your role in being responsible and being aware of when things are due. So with that being said, I want to kind of walk through this whole process with you and share some information so you can be advised. Today, the Swahili numbers are done, and what I'm looking for is a video or do. What I'm looking for is a video of you pronouncing the numbers. Some of you have been just having the numbers on the screen, looking at them. I'm aware of that, but I want you to, I want you to learn and memorize these numbers and know them. Have them in your mental Rolodex <clears throat> so you can extract them as needed. Because the flip side of that assignment is I will be calling on you in person to recite the numbers as well as the simple greeting. So you need to do a video showing that. That's the lecture numbers. Uh, chapter 3, lecture notes, uh, will be due August the 9th. Following that day, we will have a quiz on Chapter 3 on the 11th. October the 11th, we will be lecturing on Chapter 3. Uh, during this time now, I'm going to take some time out to kind of just go over again and share some of the uh, most salient points that we need to be aware of as approaching this chapter. And again, if anyone has any questions now, during this time period, it is actually 2 o'clock Friday. Uh, I'm in my office. I've been here since about 11 or 12. You can feel free to stop by if you need any personal uh, advisement. <clears throat> I'm here in the office if you have a question about getting your grade checked. I want to know where you stand. Please feel free to come by. So, briefly going through. Chapter 3 again, I just want to touch on some of the more salient points that we already talked about. You have at your disposal multiple videos, notes from class, and you're doing the book work. So you have enough information to get you through, and you have access to me as well. In addition to that information, we will also have on the quiz some information referencing the One Drop Rule and the Myth of Race video, that piece of scholarship that came from here at Southern University by Dr. Okoye Amos, myself, and several other scholars that were involved in that process. So again, as we're talking about India, you know, just to kind of go over and rehash this whole process, we're talking about the ancient Harapan society. We're talking about the Indus Valley civilization. Those are terminologies that are intermi intermixed and can be switched. The Indus Valley civilization, the Harapan civilization, the Aryan society, the Ganges River, all those are points that are closely related and are very relevant. We talked about the Aryans. We know that Aryan is a Sanskrit word that means pure. You should be aware of that from the other video that you have, that Sanskrit means pure. We talked briefly about symbolism, and I want you to kind of be aware of what we're doing when we look at symbolism as a whole from a historical perspective. Symbolism, allegories, are hidden meanings that are a more poignant point than the literal word. If I was to say, how did the chicken cross the road? Some people might look at that in a, as a literal sense. But I may have a deeper meaning, an underlying meaning, a symbolic meaning of what I'm saying. Another case in point of a, of a, of a symbolic meaning. A symbol, a symbol, other, hold, hold, hold on, class. Hold on, class. Yes, ma'am. 
I'm in the office. I'm in the office and I'm doing a video for you. Stop by. I'm right in the middle of this video. Can you come to my office? Hopefully. Hopefully. Let's see. Okay, Claire, pardon me for that for that brief interruption. But we want to continue moving forward with some of the uh, relevant areas as it relates to ancient Hindustan, which is the original name of India. Hindustan. They speak the language of Hindi and they call themselves Hindu. So you know that we approach every society from the vein of the nine areas of human interaction. And these nine areas are education, entertainment, economics, labor law, sex, politics, religion, and war. And every society has this interaction amongst its participants that uh, deal with the nine areas. So we talked about Buddhism. We talked about Shintoism. I mean, not Shintoism. We talked about Jainism. We talked about Brahmanism. We talked about Buddhism. So that's going to be the essence of the test. Uh, I want to also mention to you briefly, just a little briefly, just briefly, about some of the participants we also talked about the swastika. Don't forget that the swastika is not just an emblem of Jewish superiority, but it is a symbol that has African origin. It is the forerunner or the precursor to the cross. The swastika, depending on the direction that you have, it means different things, but the general meaning of it is well-being. It means peace, to be well. So go figure that Hitler would utilize a swastika for his regime. Uh, I mentioned to you about the different sects, if you will, of Buddhism, and I'm not going to go down a long trail with that. But the one that I want you to be cognizant of the most is Mahayana. Mahayana. Mahayana is a word that means great vehicle. And this is what the early participants of Buddhism, as they kind of, it's just human nature that people will kind of divide themselves based on like thoughts. We talked about cognitive dissonance. We know what that means, that uncomfortable feeling when someone is expounding something that, that doesn't line up with you believe, you innately get a feeling of, oh, okay, well, that's, no. And that your mind will kind of block the truth off when it's something that's not resonating with what's already in your brain computer. So Mahayana, the great vehicle, that's important. This is a date that I want you, I want you all to know, and I'm gonna highlight it real quick while I'm talking to you. Buddhism remained an important religion in India to around 1200 BCE. By that time, Buddhism had spread and began to decline in India and it became more widely accepted by Asians. Buddhism did not accept the caste system. That's important, and this is why more people gravitated toward being adherents of this. Now, here's the thing. Buddhism, well not Buddhism, Brahmanism, Hinduism, all have a scriptorial basis that justifies classism, colorism, or suppression of individuals to be exploited. There's a religious text, the Vedas, the Bhagavad Gita, that talks about how the human being, the anatomical example, and the Brahman class being the head, the mouth, or the brains, and the untouchable being the feet, the barrels of burden. Buddhism did not accept that, and yet 
you are taught to not complain about your station in life as you are a participant in this class system because your reward will come in the next life. Very eerily similar to the doctrines of Trinitarianism, Romanism, Catholicism, Christianity, all those are words that are the same. Individuals may be Christian apologetics. They may create great exegesis that reference their position. However, these two thoughts are very similar because if you are involved in a caste system, which is a social construct that has you at the bottom and you're not to complain about your, your, your lot in life, that you will be rewarded in the hereafter. Likewise, in the Trinitarian doctrine, where your reward comes after death. In this, in this Eastern thought, if one can reach nirvana, become enlightened, enlightened means, hey, I get it. I understand, I comprehend, I've discovered the meaning, I know what it is, I am enlightened. That's what that means. In these Eastern thoughts, as opposed to Western thought, your reward comes after death. No one can come back and say, hey, is everything they said it was? No one can say, man, there's nothing there. It's the biggest risk ever. Okay? It's the biggest risk ever. It's the ongoing question that may never be answered. I'm sure the adherents of Jesus were expecting him to immediately return after his plot on earth and his completion of his mission, if you will. He ascended into heaven and told his disciples, go out and be fishers of men, and ye take the gospel across the world. I'm assuming that they thought very well 20, 50 years later that his return would be rapid. A thousand years later, he still hadn't returned. 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 years, and there has still been no return. When you look at these Easternized thoughts, your karma, which is cause and effect, puts responsibility on the individual to break the cycle of the wheel of life. So guys, look, continue to look at this chapter. We're going to have a quiz on Friday the 11th. Chapter 3 uh, lecture is due. We have a video accessible to you as well. Watch the video. Watch the video. Uh, and please go in and read your chapters. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about some of these empires. I'm not going to even discuss it. You need to read it. I'm going to mention two or three of the empires that were there and discuss some of the interactions with the inhabitants of India and their encounters with the white man and their encounters with the European or the Anglo-Saxon, their encounters with Alexander the Great. Because Alexander the Great, by the age 28, had conquered most of what was called the known world. So we're going to talk a little bit about that and go in detail. I will definitely see you Monday. We're going to hit the ground running. I've been working on the back end on cameras. I'm really not sure why, but I apologize. It appears that Canvas has been making duplicate assignments. One of my favorite students, the Shayla Sterling, reached out to me and assisted me with that. And we went through that process. Uh, of trying to delete. I'm not sure why the assignments are showing twice. However, I will rectify that, and I know that that has some adjustment on your grade. However, please, again, don't leave points on the board. If you have a simple assignment where you just have to watch a video and summarize it, why would you not do that? Why would you not complete your assignment and get the points? At the end of the semester, everybody's going to be crying and whining, whining about points. It never fails. Put forth your best effort. I'm not the enemy. I'm doing everything in my power to put you in a position to win. 
these little subtle things that you may say, oh, why are he tripping about that? I'm trying to teach you subtle life lessons. You have to learn to be on time. You have to learn how to follow instructions. You have to be of a good demeanor. You, you can't have tight skin. Everything's not going to always go your way. You can't control people, places, and things. The only thing you can control is your reaction. You can control the self. You can control how you respond. And oftentimes, it's really not things that bother us, but it is our perception of those things. The thing itself may be inanimate. Can't do you a thing, but it's how you feel about it. Let's work on that. Let's work on getting better, focusing, being cognizant of time, prioritizing things, et cetera, et cetera. Last point. I want to say this to all my student athletes, cheerleaders, dancing dogs, softball players, soccer players. I get it. I'm a part of the Jaguar family and this great institution. I just want to know or state that Without school, you would not be in the band. Without school, you would not be playing softball, soccer, any of those things. School comes first. You have to learn how to prioritize. Perhaps some of those things may not be for you if it's too much. If you're getting behind in your schooling, which is the paramount reason you're here, you need to trim the fat. I know band practice is up until 10 o'clock. If you signed up for that, do it. You signed up for this class? Do it. But neither one should, should lack or miss out because you're overwhelmed. If you're overwhelmed, there's too much on your plate. If you don't have time to do it, it's too much on your plate. If you can't figure out how to control it, it's too much on your plate. So remember, life is a series of choices. Every choice has an outcome, good or bad based on your options. Today, what shall you choose? You choose greatness or mediocrity. And remember, always investigate the information you receive. If it is indeed the truth, it should stand the test of investigation. Always ask why. Okay? Peace. Have a good weekend. I will see you guys on Monday.